Alright guys, welcome back to another video, and this is another collection video. Uh, I thought I'd show you guys my PC Engine collection. This is mainly because due to the UK has recently picked up a, a Dewar, which was a fantastic buy mate. So I just thought I'd run through some of the games I've got from the PC Engine. I love my PC Engine, it's a fantastic system. I have around 44 games for it I think, but none of them are that special to be honest. Uh, I've only... The most I've spent on a PC Engine game is £4, so I don't really have much of the, the great ones. But I've got a few decent games, so I'll just crack on. I'll go with my officially box games first, then some custom boxes, and then just all my loose hue cards. So we'll start with the first one, and that is Die Hard. This game is pretty poor, to be honest. It's an over the head run and gun style game but the die hard license has just been tacked on I think it was a totally different game to start with and they've just fired the, the die hard brand onto it it's a uh, it is pretty poor uh, and it can go for quite a lot of money actually I think you could I think the average price to pay for this is about £20 but I wouldn't recommend picking this one up next up is a shooter it's, I think the proper name for this is Daisimpu, uh, but it's also known as Tiger Hawk here in the West. Uh, it was called Tiger Hawk on the Mega Drive. Not a bad shooter, not one of the better ones, but it's not too bad. I think the problem with this is, although you play the plane, the majority of the targets are on the ground, and although you fire bullets and bombs, the bombs are much slower. So. It, it doesn't really work, I don't think. But it looks nice. It's a nice enough game. Next up is Space Invaders. This is just standard Space Invaders fare. Uh, I think there is also a remix version on this. I'm not 100% sure. I've not played it that much. I actually got this game free with my PC engine. But Space Invaders, what, what can you say about that? Next up is one of my favourite on the system. Parkland. Uh, if anyone has not played this, Parkland is a side-scrolling platformer based on Pac-Man. It has the most fantastic music in a game I've ever played. Really uplifting, really cheery. Uh, and it's just a really fun game. Uh, another great version of it is also in the Atari Lynx. But it's a pretty fun game. I definitely recommend picking this up. Next up is Batman. Now I was very surprised when I bought this game because I was expecting it to be sort of like a platformer and game like your NES versions and things like that but this is actually more of a puzzle game similar to Bomberman it's laid out in like a grid pattern and Batman has to go around doing tasks on one level he has to uh, defuse bombs and then on another level he has to clean up graffiti because that's something you always see Batman doing but it is still a good game it's pretty hard, it's quite a long game uh, luckily there's a password save feature on it, but it's, it's definitely worth picking up, it's, you'll never play another Batman game like it anyway. Now here's definitely one of my favourite games on the system, this is just in a wee shitty custom case I've made here, but it's Bloody Wolf. This is again an overhead running gun, but it's just fantastic, it's just balls to the wall, mental. Uh, you basically play a lone guy, Taking on an army, Rambo style, but it's very, very, very good. I was very lucky to pick this game up actually, because I looked at it. Uh, boxed and complete, it normally goes for around thirty pound, I think. Uh, and the loose carts normally fifteen to twenty pound. Uh, and I actually got this from Japan uh, for a really, really good price. Uh, I think it was two hundred yen. Plus shipping, but I actually got it with a couple games at the same time, so I saved a bit on it. I was very surprised to get that. It's another quirky little game, Bravo Man. I'm not really sure what the official Japanese name for it is. But this is a side-scrolling platforming game, and also a shooter rolled into one. It's got a quirky sense of humour. play this guy here, he's got extendable arms and legs and that. And... PC Engine's got loads of these style games that sort of cross genres and uh, they're neither one or the other. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. You can pick it up pretty cheap, so it's well worth picking up. 
Next up is a shockingly printed out case. This, this is when my printer was running out of ink. But Superstar Soldier, one of the best shooters on the system. Highly recommend this game. Uh, I, I wasn't much of a shooter fan, to be honest. Uh, it was one of my least favourite genres back in the day. But just recently, certainly since I got my PC Engine, I've just it's one of my favourites now. Uh, so many great games. And this is uh, this is one of them. I don't actually think this is the best one, to be honest. I actually prefer Final Soldier, which is slightly controversial, because people say this is the better one. I just feel the difficulty on this is not as finely tuned. You could pretty much get to level 4 without losing a life, without any trouble at all. And then level 5 is just peaks, and as soon as you lose, up, lose all your power-ups, then you're snookered. Speaking of Final Soldier, that one here as well. Like I say, I actually prefer this one, but it's a similar style setup. Uh, the power ups in that are very similar, similar. But uh, the great thing about these games is that when you do power up your power ups uh, to the maximum capacity, the bullets just fill the screen. It's a uh, but really good game. I think this is the cheapest of the three out of. Superstar Soldier, Final Soldier, and Gunhead. Uh, I'm not sure about Soldier Blade and that. Uh, but yeah, so this is, uh, I think you could probably pick this up for about 10 15 pounds, so it's well worth picking up. Really great shooter. This shooter, not so much to be honest. Uh, heavy unit. Not one of my favourites, this. I feel it's, not only is it, I find it incredibly difficult. But I just feel like it moves a little slow. I don't think it has quite the f the fluidness of the Final Soldier games and that. So and it, when you die, you don't automatically start back where you died. You go back to a checkpoint, which isn't my favourite thing to do, to be honest. In the shooter, yeah, but it's still a decent game. It's still even a bad shooter on the PC engine. It's still a good game to have. So it's heavy unit. My final official box game is one I just picked up recently, actually, I've got it in the last few weeks. And it is Mr. Heli. I was pretty disappointed with this game, to be honest. I'd heard good things about it. And it's it's all right. Obviously, you see the Irene logo there, you expect great things. I think the problem I find with some levels are force scrolling and some aren't. And the ones that aren't, the enemies just seem to keep coming and coming and coming until you move the screen forward. Uh, I might be wrong in the later levels, but that's the impression I get from it. So, and your wee heli man, he's a bit big, I think, for the environment. It's kind of difficult to avoid bullets. Uh, but uh, overall, it, it is a fun game. I can't get very far. I think I get to level four. But it's, uh, it's worth it. I'm glad I picked it up. I'll probably maybe go back to it one time uh, and try and beat it. But yeah, so that's Mr. Helly. So that's all my official box games. I'm not too concerned about the boxes with PC Engine games because if anyone's never seen a PC Engine box, there's really nothing on the back. Uh, and although the manuals are lovely, they're always most of them are full colour and things like that. I'm not too concerned. So these are a few that I've printed out my own cases for. Another shooter now. Or dying. If I try and see if I can zoom out a bit for you. He's a said and done. Ah, right, so that's. For fuck's sake. That's or dying. A, a sort of a cue em up. Uh, pretty good game. I really enjoy this. It's pretty simple. Uh, how it differs further shooters doesn't really. Sort of similar to. The Parodis series and things like that. One good thing about it is that your power-ups come from shops and you usually find a shop floating around before every big major boss battle. So, yeah, it's pretty good fun. Again, you can pick it up pretty cheap. One of my favourite games now, Power Drift. Uh, to be fair, this version is pretty spectacular for an 8, well, really an 8-bit system. But it's kind of unplayable. I think it's a bit too choppy and the game requires too much from the old PC engine. 
but it's still very, very impressive for what it could do, to be honest. All, most of the tracks are there. Hey, you do have to play them in order, whereas before you used to be able to select your track, but unfortunately with this you have to play them in order. So unless you're really good, you're not really going to see some of the later tracks. But it's very impressive. Visually it looks great, and uh, I'm certainly glad I picked it up, because as I say, Power Drift is one of my favourite games, and I do dream of owning the arcade one day. Another arcade conversion here, Ninja Warriors. Excuse me, this is pretty much an arcade port. Uh, if you've never played Ninja Warriors, it was a, a massive arcade back in the day. It actually had three screens uh, lying horizontal, and you could play the game. Basically, you transversed the three whole three screens. Uh, you basically just went from left to right, killing everything you came across. And this is a good conversion. It does get a little repetitive, it's very much an arcade game, you're meant to be playing it for 5-10 minutes at best, but very good version on the PC Engine. Next up is Rastan Saga 2, sequel to the original Rastan. First game was phenomenal, fantastic, great arcade game, some of the ports from the Master System version, really really good, really enjoyed it. This game not so much, they've zoomed in the view more on this so you're Sprite looks a lot bigger, but the the drawings are pretty poor, badly animated, uh, and again the difficulty is quite high. Things come thick and fast at you. But uh, would I recommend it? I'm not too sure, to be honest. It's uh, I do enjoy it. It's just it's a bit of a guilty pleasure for me, but it's by no means a great game. Yeah, racing game now, Motor Raider. Fortunately, this game's not very good. Uh, the sequel was much better, which I don't have anymore. I've gave it to somebody and I've not got it back. Uh, it's basically like a Micro Machines top-down racer where you could customise and upgrade your car and that, but it's a little slow. Uh, very much an early 80s sort of style top-down racer. And finally, Shooter. Uh, this, again, I can't remember the Japanese name for it, but it's basically Tiger Heli. It's a really good game. I'm sure it was released on the Mega Drive as well. Overhead shooter. It's You play a helicopter. Very simple. Some of the graphics are not the best on the PC Engine. Certainly nowhere near as good as the Soldier series or that. But I really enjoy this. Some of the power-ups are quite good. Yeah, you could... Your power-ups basically consist of four different style shots, which either fire say forward or in 90 degree patterns or front and back and what not. Uh, so yeah, so it's really good, worth picking up. Again, not too expensive. That's a good thing about PC Engine games is that some of the good ones aren't that expensive. I mean, don't get me wrong, a lot of them are in their 50s and 60s, 70 pounds. But you can pick up some good games for quite cheap to get you started. Right, onto my loose carts now. Uh, first up is Street Fighter 2. I think this is a phenomenal version of Street Fighter 2. It really is fantastic what the old PC engine's capable of doing with this. Considering it really is an 8 bit system. I know people like to think it's 16 bit, but I think it's 8 bit. And this is a fantastic version. Although it's difficult with the only two buttons on the control pad. Uh, you have to use your select button uh, to change between kicks and punches, which doesn't work that great, to be honest. It is playable. I do. I have. I can finish it. Uh, mainly because I tend to only use the high kicks and the high punches anyway in Street Fighter 2. But really, really good. So if you could pick this game up, I recommend picking up an arcade stick with it as well. Uh, two games now. F1 Circus and F1 Circus 91. These are Formula One top-down racers. Uh, pretty good games actually. Uh, they've got again that arcadey look about them. Uh, they've got quite a large career mode, which is surprising for a racer from back then. But it's basically just Formula One racing. Uh, yeah, pretty fast actually. I think the first one's the best. And as they went on, there was a new one released every year up until '94, I think. Uh, but it seemed to lose something the longer it went on. So I definitely recommend picking up the first one. Again, you could pick this up. I think I paid 50 pence for that. Another racing game now. This one's a bit beat up. Uh, it's Victory Run. 
This was basically the PC engine's answer to OutRun uh, before they got a conversion of OutRun on the system. This came out uh, Victory Run. So it plays just the same. Good game, pretty difficult. Uh, I could get all the way up to the last stage and I run out of time. But it's, uh, yeah, just if you like OutRun games, this one's definitely worth picking up. Right, next up. There's a couple baseball games. Uh, don't know why I've got so many of these, but uh, I actually really enjoy baseball games for some reason. Uh, I love like 2020 baseball on the any on the Neo Geo, and I've just always enjoyed baseball games for pick up and play. I can't remember which one it is that's the best of the three. I think it's this one. But uh, this Namco one's not very good. The graphics are fairly poor, fairly bland. But it's either one of these two that have got pretty detailed sprites. And it's just it's baseball at the end of the day. So I actually got these thrown in with bundles. Yeah. But I do enjoy playing them now and again. Next up, it's a game called B-Ball. This is actually like a puzzle game where you play the Wii last eight and you have to push this big ball onto platforms. And uh, there's coloured balls and coloured platforms and you have to match them up. And it's played in a, like a grid pattern. So it's a pretty fun game actually. It's quite a good puzzle. It's, don't get me wrong, it's not a must have game. But if you saw it, if it, if it was free with a bundle or that, or if you saw it for pretty cheap, it's worth picking up. It actually looks pretty nice. The graphics are quite incredible on it. Next up, one of my favourite games on the system. PC Gaijin, I think it is too. Or Bonk's Adventure as it's called everywhere else. This is the second one. I personally think the second one's the best of the series. Uh, the third one introduced a shrinking mechanic and a giant mechanic and I don't think it worked really well. And the first one is, although a great game, it just perfected everything in the second game. So again, PC Engine mascot Bonk is a really good game. It's not a Sonic or a Mario beater, but it's still worth picking up. Really good platforming game. And large as well. Right, next up is one I know Tootie's played. Uh, I always thought it was called The Kung Fu. But it's also called China Warrior. And I can't remember what the other name is. But uh, it's visually, it's pretty spectacular. The sprites are huge. The characters fill the screen. But the gameplay is fairly basic. You just go from left to right, beating up the same person over and over again until you get to the boss. And all the bosses look the same, minus a wee change of clothes. But it's, uh, it's pretty fun for five minutes, don't get me wrong, it is pretty cool. Uh, but you're not going to play it for hours and hours. Right, sure now. Psycho Chaser. Again, this is an overhead shoot 'em up where you play a giant, like sort of robot, like a Robocop type guy, running through the levels, shooting everything. Uh, it just plays like a shooter, though. It's actually sort of not on rails, but it's forced scrolling. But it's not the best shooter on the system, to be honest. It's a bit boring, a bit bland. Uh, I, I wouldn't really recommend this one. Uh, next up is an odd game. It's called Gate Ball, something or another. Uh, it's basically croquet. Uh, and it's, I don't know why. I, again, I got it for free in the bundle. And it's, it's fun for a few minutes, but... I don't know anyone wants to play, play croquet in real life, let alone on a PC engine. Two dungeon crawlers now. I've got Dungeon Explorer and Double Dungeons. Dungeon Explorer is more like a sort of Zelda game, I suppose you could say. Yeah. Where it's like you go around village areas and things like that and then you go into dungeons and try and explore. The problem with this is it's a really good game. But it's the Japanese version, so all the stories in Japanese. And then Double Dungeons is a first person dungeon crawler, which pretty impressive visuals, but pretty bland and boring gameplay. Uh, obviously these early first person dungeon crawlers, the corridors all look the same, and there's a lot of flicker, and it's not the best to be honest. Another puzzle game here. Uh, I can't remember the full name, but it's Doraemon. Uh, it actually plays a lot like Bomberman, 
whereas you you basically have to collect certain things in the level and the, it's a grid pattern again but you actually could dig holes for bad guys to fall into uh, that's basically how you defeat them so it's uh, yeah it's a really good game actually uh, it doesn't look like much but I'd highly recommend it it's really fun if you like Bomberman it's definitely worth picking up uh, another shooter here this is Deep Blue uh, underwater shooter it's pretty terrible not recommended Good game here, Samurai Ghost. Uh, I, it's an odd game. It has, has loads of different things that you could do. You have an overhead world. You have a side scrolling hack and slash. You have a platforming stage. Graphics are a little hit and miss, but it's it is a fun game. But I've heard sequels better because it only focuses on hack and slash stages, which are the most fun. Uh, but it's it's pretty bonkers to be honest. One of the early shooters now, Dragon Spirit. Again, I think this was released on the Mega Drive. This is a really good game. I really enjoy this shooter. You play a dragon, and you basically go through sort of mythical style worlds with volcanoes and seas and whatnot, lava and that. It's a really good game. The one downside to it is your dragon is a little large. It is quite easy to get hit. Especially as you power up, your dragon gets bigger as well which makes it even easier to get hit. So, uh, yeah, but it's definitely worth picking up. Uh, and there's a sequel as well called Dragon Saber, which is uh, meant to be just as good, I think. Arcade conversion here. Vigilante. This is the best version of Vigilante you could get, uh, unless you own the arcade machine, in my opinion, anyway. The Master System version is really good, but this looks, looks impressive. Great, great game. But it's just as difficult. Uh, the, the cuddling mechanic in it where the bad guys hug you for a little while and you lose energy is drastic in this. Your energy just zaps away. Must be some strong cuddling. Another shooter now. Image Fight. Again, another one by Irene, makers of our type. This is a good, good, good game, but I feel it's a little difficult. I don't know if it's just because I suck at it, but it's nowhere near as good to say as our type but uh, it's pretty good uh, the good thing about all these shooters on the PC engine is you can control the speed that your ship moves around so if you're more a slower kind of guy that likes to take his time uh, that's an option whereas if you're like a twitch player good reactions you could adjust it to play it a lot quicker which is uh, very very helpful especially in a game like this Another one I just picked up a month or two ago, I've been after it for a while, it's Gunheed. Uh, first in the series of the Final Soldier games and that, this is also called Blazing Lasers for the Turbo Graphics 16. Fantastic game. The only problem I have with this, I find, is the difficulty level is non-existent until the last level. Uh, I never died once, first playthrough I never died once until the very last level, and then the level 7. Not level 7. The last level is just it's frustrating to say the least. But it's a really good game. Fantastic power up system. And you could get it for under £20 usually. It's well worth picking up. Four wrestling games now. Yeah. But I've got uh, it's a legendary bout one. Uh, also called the Fire Pro series, the wrestling games. And it's one, two, and three. Uh, they don't actually differ that much, to be honest. Three is the best of the bunch, but they're not the best wrestling games. They're very, very basic. Uh, if anyone's ever played like a Fire Pro game, it's not like the WWF ones where you bang the buttons. It's all about position, timing. Uh, you have to press the buttons at a specific time and things like that. And this is used the same engine, but it was Monsters, sort of like a King of Monsters style wrestling game. Uh, but not the best games, to be honest. I wouldn't rush out and sell your kidney to buy them. It's interesting to see where they all started for the Fire Pro, because the Fire Pro wrestling games are still going today. Uh, boxing game now. Digital Champ. This is a first-person boxing game. 
Really, really difficult, but really impressive. I think the graphics on this are fantastic. It's a really fun game, but you do get your arse kicked. Uh, I could get past the first guy, but that's it. But uh, yeah, it's definitely worth picking up though. It's just to see what the PC Engine can do. I really do think the graphics are phenomenal on it. Uh, again, for an 8-bit system. Second last game now. It's uh, Kato Chan and Ken Chan. Uh, a platformer with a crazy wacky sense of humour. It's a fantastic game. Sort of like an Adventure Island style game. But you play these two crazy guys that I think are Japanese personalities. I think they're like the Ant and Deck of Japan. But it's got a crude sense of humour. You could fart on people to, to destroy them. Uh, pick their nose and whatnot. And really good game though. It's fun, energetic, but difficult at the same time. Really good. Recommended. And finally, I have Legendary Axe 1. Legendary Axe is a platforming game where you have a giant axe that you could hack and slash fannies that are in your way. Really good game, but again, it's difficult. It's this type of game I think that you just play until you die, and then that's it, you've had enough. Because yeah, you lose all your powers, your axe powers up through each level, and then once you die, it goes back a stage. When that happens, it just becomes too difficult. But really good game. I feel the second one's just as good. But again, it's definitely worth picking up. Graphics again are lovely. A lot of these graphics rival the Mega Drive. And finally, I've just had a few games here. I can find them. These are all just games that I've got given for free, but I can't actually play because they're all in Japanese. I think this one's called Benkai Gaiden. Uh, but I don't know what the other two is. This is like a Zelda style clone and this is a sort of like a Mario Party style game where you play a board game and do little mini games. But these were just thrown in for free in a bundle I bought. So as I say I don't know, I've never played them. Well I've had a shot of them but I don't know how to play them. So if, uh, if Tony, Anthony, so, uh, Soft Otaku, if you happen to be watching this video and these are any good to you mate feel free to let me know and I'll send them your way or if anyone else could read Japanese and wants these for the PC Engine then they're more than welcome to them so there you go guys, that's my PC Engine games uh, hope you enjoyed this video, it's not too long I love the PC Engine uh, I'm really glad I've managed to buy it uh, I, I knew about it back in the day but wasn't too clued up on it uh, so thankfully due to YouTube I've became accustomed to it and I recommend one to anyone uh, especially for Bloody Wolf which is which is fantastic right guys so I'll leave you with that and I'll catch you next time